Alright, I'll assemble these clutch components. There's a little tab on the spring that has to drop into a notch in the centre component. Then I've got to compress this spring without displacing it. Rotate it so that I'm pulling all of the spring in. Put the outer over the top, slide it down into place. And there I have it. My clutch assembled. It always moves smoother, much smoother in one direction than the other. And that's the direction it's designed to move. So I'll put a bit of synthetic grease through the centre. Drop that over the film advance shaft. And then the bush that goes on top of the film advance shaft needs to go in place. Now this has been through the cleaner, so the gears have lost all the grease that they had. So I'm just going to force some grease into the gears. And wipe through the centre. Oh, I think I want to put my rewind shaft and my rewind button shaft, the uh, sprocket shaft, through there first. It makes it easier to get this in place. So we'll do that. Film sprocket goes in the back of the camera, slot side up towards the top of the camera. I've got the shaft here, I'll just put some grease down there towards the top, towards the bottom. Usually I put a bit on the, uh, the teeth too, just for good measure. It slides right through. I flip the camera over, can pull back this lever, allows that shaft to come right through there. I'll just close the front of this camera, so it'll lie flat. Now I've got to get the screw through that uh, couples the shaft to the film sprocket, so I've just lined those up. And the screw is very similar to the ones that formed the hinge pin, except it's a little bit longer. The rewind button can go in place. I've got its return spring. Its washer. And the rewind button. Normally I just put a little bit of synthetic grease on the spring. Put that over the button. Put the washer over the end of the button. And holding my finger on the top of the shaft, the top of the camera, so that the shaft doesn't push away, I can screw this into position on the bottom of the sprocket shaft. At least that's the idea, it doesn't want to start. That's it, I'm just checking that it passes through the washer and that the washer is not trapped underneath it. Take my pliers and just make sure that's done up tight. Back to the top of the camera. Let's get that uh, that down in place. Get this in place. Now you might have to revolve both the sprocket shaft and the uh, take-up spool to get those gears to mesh. Then there are three screws that hold that in position. Countersunk head screws. They should be fairly tidy examples. There may be some floating around with glue stuck to them. They've come from the bottom of the camera. It should be nice clean ones at the top of the camera. If you've put them through the cleaner like I have, they're all nice clean screws. 
so it doesn't matter. Do those three screws up. Check that everything revolves smoothly still, and it does. At the base of the camera, this can be closed up now because we're done here. Just open that door so the camera will stay where it's put. The tripod socket goes on here. And if I can find three ugly looking screws, or screws with a bit of glue still stuck on them, that's where they would go. In practice I don't need to be doing that because all these screws are clean. Right, with all the screws in place, now I can tighten them up. And the little surround that goes, or the guard that goes around the rewind button. And that's held in place with two brass screws. In most cases, on early cameras it's not, it's held in with small nickel plated steel countersunk head screws. But I presume that people did the screws up too tight and distorted the al aluminium no end and so they decided to use these nice flat screws instead. Right, well that's good. I'm just going to push that leather back over the top there to hold that loosely in place. I'll glue that back shortly. Go back to the top of the camera. That gear goes on the top. And that should couples the sprocket shaft and the film advance shaft together. And it should revolve around relatively smoothly. Sometimes it's a little bit lumpy. That's, um, that one's running nicely. That's good. I've got to get all these components aligned. I'm pretty sure I left off having put this wheel in place on the top. But it occurs to me it might be a useful thing to glue down this leather on the base of the camera before I go much further. So... First thing I'm going to do is peel it back some distance to here so that when I glue it back down I don't get a line across the middle of the camera which you otherwise would get. I'll just give that a quick wipe with a bit of uh, naphtha. Same on the leather. And some glue. You can see this leather will soak up the adhesive, so I've got to put a generous amount on there. Spread it out. Make sure I get cover right to the edges. And round the release button for the front here, need to make sure that's well covered. Remove the excess from here and round the 
release button for the front. Normally what I do there is I give that a, a wipe with a bit of synthetic grease in the hole. That prevents the glue from sticking to my button. So there's my leather all glued back there. Just rub away that excess. And by pulling the leather back, it means that if I do get a line where the leather's been pulled back and re-glued, it'll be right back here. Be just a narrow band here and here, which is much harder to see than a line straight across the middle of the camera. And as uh, I've probably mentioned previously, this boss here is riveted on over the top of the leather. The leather does not go around that boss. So in order to uh, remove the leather completely, I would have to cut it around the boss or remove the boss. Either of which are um, more than I want to have to deal with. Right, that'll be fine. That Zeiss pump there may or may not ever settle down. Because the leather's been stretched and stretched leather does not want to unstretch right to the top of the camera and get these film advanced components installed. Where are we? The first thing to reinstall is this little ratchet pawl. So I'll put the standoff underneath it, the ratchet pawl goes on there, then I've got the spring for the ratchet pawl and the screw that holds it all in place here ready to go. I'm going to get this screw through the ratchet pull, through the standoff, into the hole in the top plate, run that screw down and make sure that the ratchet pull is free to move and the screw is otherwise driven home. So there's a little return spring for the ratchet pull, I need to hook that behind the post. Make sure that's sitting in its notch. And there you'll see the ratchet pull acting as I roll the spool forward with my thumb. So that's doing its job. It stops that whole business from being able to back up. Usually I would give this a very light wipe with a bit of synthetic grease. Is the drive dog that uh, drives our cocking action. It drives the whole film advance actually. And the spring goes from the top of that. on there and the ratchet for the film advance is this component and the ratchet's designed so that you can only move the film advance lever in the forward direction when you're advancing the film and not until you reach the end of the advance stroke will it allow you to return the advance lever to the rest position. In other words, you cannot inch the film advance lever, it can only move a full stroke. Right, I know from experience that that is probably a good spot to put that to give me correct tension when I get to that point. We've got our control lever here that the pawl that acts against the ratchet. That sits in that hole. I'm just giving that a little wipe with some molybdenum paste just so this will move smoothly and freely. And then the clamp down 
bracket that holds everything in place which of course has been through the cleaner and it's completely devoid of lubricant at the moment so I need to squeeze a bit into the center and a bit into the gear itself the top there wouldn't hurt just by putting a decent sized blob on there and applying some pressure with your thumb the hydraulic pressure will just push that in because this sits on here and the tab on there holds that arm down so you've got to make sure that's in place and it's all right now where are we still in camera just I have to zoom out a bit I think we're just about disappearing off camera here that screw that's a foreign where did that appear from okay Getting this screw correctly positioned is always a bit of a trial. That's in place. I can tighten it up once I get the others in place. So we've got a plain screw at this end of the bracket. And there's a shoulder screw that holds a spring on here. And I did see that spring somewhere, it shouldn't have been. Let's hope I can find it now. Back shortly. Right, I found the spring. It had found its way into the uh, components that I was cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner. So as a result it ended up in the sieve when I was rinsing and drying the components off. And uh, as is common for little pieces of pointy wire, it had found its way into the mesh of the sieve. And was doing its best to look disguised so I wouldn't notice it. Right, that's my three screws in position. I can do those three screws up. And that spring goes behind that pole. So it'll lift it up. goes behind the pole so it flicks the pole the end of the pole out effectively pushing this end of the pole in now if I want some tension on that film advance let's put the gear in place the spacer that sits on that the spacer is present on the two A's but not the one A's Right, so that's a good start position there. So if I wind that a whole full turn, holding that pull back with my finger, that would be the start position. Press that pull down, it allows me to wind this in the forward direction. So I've got that sitting there, it's just held on the ratchet at the moment. That prevents it from backing up. And I've got the cocking rack here which I can put into place. So I'll just lubricate that with a little bit of synthetic grease. And the cocking racks on the Retina 2As are very robust and it's virtually unknown for them to cause problems. And people will tell you different because they've read it somewhere else but actually that's the cocking racks that give problems are cocking racks from later cameras, not the 1A and 2A. Right, that's all good. So my cocking rack is in position. And 
What have I got to put on here next? I'll put the rewind on, I think. And there should be three screws for that. And there are. That's good. So a bit of synthetic grease to the inner part of the rewind shaft. Slide that in from the bottom. A little tab runs into that slot. It's sort of an egg shaped arrangement. And some grease to the inside of the bush. And putting the bush over the top, it's reluctant of course because that little spring piece there, so I always lift that up with the tip of a screwdriver to allow this to fall into place, make sure it runs smoothly. If you don't turn it up with the tip of a screwdriver, you just force this in, this piece gets bent and it may the action may be stiff after that. So a little bit of extra care there, certainly doesn't hurt. Three screws hold this to the top of the camera casting. screws up tight. Let's flip this over for a minute. Let's check that that leather is sitting down nicely. And here's the surround for the tripod socket and it's two chromed brass screws. These look the same as the ones used on the later cameras like the 3Cs, but they're actually shorter. You can get away with a long screw in one of the positions, in the other position it fouls the mechanism for the rewind button, I think. Anyway, that's in place. That's the base of our camera dealt with. At the top of the camera now, we've got our shutter release to drop into place. The shaft for that. This has an unnecessary number of components. So I start with a smear of grease around the main shaft just under the top there. And it's solely to help stick this little collar in place so that it's not flopping around and causing me grief. The little collar sits over the top of the shutter release button and its job is to stop the shutter release button from being able to rise up too high, which would cause trouble. So some molybdenum paste down those two holes in the casting. Yeah, is there a bubble of water there? What was that? That might not have been entirely dry. Let me blow that out. Yeah, there's a spring goes over the pin here. And then this goes into the body right here. I'm going to line it up with the shaft. On the struts mechanism. That's all good. The shutter release button, as I say, sits on the top right there. Okay, so the body's ready now to have the rangefinder put back in place. And I see I haven't serviced that yet, so I'd better do that. <laughs> 